five minutes to eight o'clock, 2GB News Talk 87, play the song. This is the Mike Carlton Morning on 2GB News Talk 87. Television in the, uh, seems to be coming a little raunchier and racier these days. There was some uh, horror full frontal nudity on the ABC last night. And there are their youth program called Blah Blah Blah. There was a, a band called the Lubricated Goats. The Lubricated Goats. Not all that thrilling, you might say, except they were totally in the raw and it was all hanging out. And there was a flood of calls to the ABC saying, how dare you? So there. Eight o'clock news is coming right up. In about 1987, the ABC decided that they'd change uh, the uh, viewing for young folk. And uh, they decided to get rid of Countdown, uh, get rid of Beatbox, uh, institute other shows like The Factory, and uh, as part of that, um, my boss, our boss, Michael Shrimpton, who was the man who used to run, uh, start a Countdown, he said he wanted a late night alternative show, tonight show, uh, for young people that dealt with social issues. Blah 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 was a, uh, a weird beast. It was a social and political issue discussion program at the same time as being a, uh, a chat show, a variety show with comedy, live music and uh, you know, outrageous acts. But it was um, the Don Lane show on acid. It was the anti-tonight show. What we, what we put on our letterheads was it was serious television done stupidly. I think, uh, as I did then, that Denton is a comic genius. Uh, I thought it was highly appropriate the ABC do stuff like that. It's a shame it's not doing more of it now. It was late night and we hoped that it would break some new ground and it would cause some controversy within the audience, but not necessarily as much as perhaps it did from time to time. One of Andrew's biggest agendas was that he hated television. Yeah. And so he, in a lot of ways, the mix was kind of interesting because Martin and I have always profoundly loved television. And we were, and then throwing us in with, with someone who hated television. I didn't particularly like being on it. And, and for years I just watched what seemed to me to be the same cosy group of people interviewing each other on increasingly bland TV shows. And so I came to television with a lot of attitude. You know, I knew nothing about making television but I sure knew how to take the piss and I sure knew things I was angry about. You'd have a whiteboard up on the wall in the office where uh, you know, you'd brainstorm stuff and people would write up, you know, someone would write, people would be firing off ideas and people would write up you know, you know, 50 or 60 ideas for possible shows. Yeah, it was a matter of, of what drove us at the time, what we thought was interesting. And then we would find the guest and then we would find, you know, work out the comedy to go with it. And what Andrew did was he he was um, writing and he was the sidekick for Doug Mulray on his Sydney um, breakfast show at the time. And he ended up bringing in, uh, in the second series, um, a whole lot of comedy writers, which is where um, Bruce Griffiths became involved with us and um, his anarchistic, mm. punk, yeah. leftish yeah. leanings. I thought, as I think now, that Bruce is just... Uh, not only the most anally retentive writer I've ever met, but also one of the most talented. He's just, he's got a fantastic brain. Andrew said the brief was kind of, you've been given a TV show, do whatever you want with it. He just had this show to play with where all these, it didn't matter how stupid the ideas got, chances were, uh, they'd be used. Mind you, for many years he tried to, <laughs> he tried hundreds of ways of getting me to dance nude with a monkey and that idea never got up. <laughs> It was the first thing I ever wrote for the program. It's the top of the first page of notes. And it says something like, uh, an entire program completely in the nude. The host nude, the guest nude, the audience nude, uh, and Lubricated Goat plays in the raw completely nude. And the idea was to also never refer to it. At no stage during the show was anybody going to say, excuse us, we're nude and here's a nude band. People were just going, the idea was people would turn it on and go, hang on, these people are nude. And they'd watch it for an hour wondering why they were nude and at no point would it ever be explained. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds right. That sounds like one of Bruce's many thousands of ideas that came through. Obviously it fell over the host nude bit. Um, the, the show was meant to be a comedy show, not a show designed to incite public panic. People wanted to do this, but in the end, Andrew, uh, 
kind of chickened out. And he said, look, I'll, look, I'll do it if you'll do it. And I said, I'll do it. And he went, no, I'm still not going to do it. Oh, if I ever agreed I was having him on, <laughs> I can tell you, I was never going to be nude for anyone. I'm not even nude for myself in the shower. <laughs> I think what must have happened with this is the idea would have been lying around for a long time and we eventually wanted to do a show about censorship so it's like perfect this is the perfect way to use a new band and particularly we wanted a new male band because it was our view remember this is 1988 that at the time if we'd had a nude female band or a topless female band there would have been mutterings but not much outrage but to put on a new male band there would be, as there was, extreme outrage, which was just part of the double standard of, uh, at the time. I think it would have been a fair bet to say there was no other TV show at the time that was going to put, um, you know, lubricated goat on TV. It got reduced to just lubricated goat doing in the raw nude, and people still said, yeah, we want to do that if they'll do it. I said, yeah, I'll get them to do it. Basically through misinformation, because... Uh... Someone thought that we were a band that played naked all the time, and we weren't. It was this other band called No More Bandicoots. No More Bandicoots loved nudity. Uh, I think we were the, the first and, to my knowledge, the only band to, to make it a habit of playing nude. Um, we decided we weren't going to do anything else except play nude, and this kind of inspired the spasm to do the nude gig, which we especially because it was televised. So because they thought we were the band that played naked, they asked us to play naked. Oh, no, there was never any confusion. I knew that there was no more bandicoots that played nude, but uh, that wasn't the point. It wasn't the point of... The point was lubricated goat playing in the raw nude. That was the idea, or well, that was part of the idea. It had to be that band, that song, and perform that way. It was just the right combination of things. This is pure conjecture, but I think that Bruce had liked the idea of a naked band. We had Lubricated Goat, who was a relatively popular underground band at that time, had recently we'd written a song on our current record at the time, which was called In the Raw, where Stuart talks about being naked and, uh, and invading like someone's personal space with your nakedness, like going in their bedroom and stuff, and... Uh, doing things with your naked body. Stuart, um, that's, that, that song there, In the Raw, I mean, I, I wonder when I read uh, your lyrics whether you write them from experience or whether sometimes you throw yourself in a fictitious sort of fantasy world. That one's uh, sort of from experience. Someone coming into your room and going around touching everything, and, you, know, you know, leaving their mark on you. And Except what? in this case, the person's, you go out and this person sneaks into your room in the raw and goes around doing all the things that's said in the song, like sniffing your dirty washing and going through your sock drawer. Why do you think they were doing that? Touching on my own personal things. Um, just some sort of deviation. And I think that Bruce had made the connection between the two and um, thought that it would, you know, make for lively television. We didn't request a group of uh, musicians to suddenly appear naked. Uh, that was their act. That's what they really did. And in fact, that was one of the strong arguments why um, ABC management allowed it to go to air. They had a confrontational band name, uh, a song title that was kind of confrontational, the lyrics certainly were, and it was appropriate in the raw, the band was in the raw, it was the song that summed it up. And the noise, no, uh, was right, it was confrontational. Certainly there were hesitations voiced which um, led to the uh, rather strange lineup of uh, the lubricated goat that night. Bruce came to tell the band uh, at the time, that, that was lubricated goat, that, um, that they could appear on uh, blah 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 if they agreed to do it nude. Charles Tolney, Charlie was the guitar player at the time, when we were asked to do the show. And uh, Charlie refused point blank to appear naked on national television. I didn't want people laughing at my big fat hairy ass for the rest of my life, you know, because I could just picture it in my mind 
all these people pointing at it and having the laugh of their lives at my expense. And I think we went through a period where Peter Reed was the drummer, and I'm not sure if he was the drummer at that stage, but Reedy was prepared to do it. I found out that it was happening. And for some reason, Brett couldn't or wouldn't. And because the nakedness was not unknown to me, I was asked. But it was a completely different situation to what I thought it would be. Normally, Blah 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 was a studio-based show, and we took the show on the road and uh, we took over a nightclub and did the entire show in and around um, Selena's nightclub. Selena's is a dump. It's a dive. It's a horrible place in which to work. It's a horrible place in which to make a TV show because there's a, there's a kind of a real... There's an energy. There's a raw energy to Selena's, but it wasn't a good energy. It was kind of... There's something very aggro about it. We shot in the urinal. We shot in the on the stage. We shot in the audience and uh, turned it into a studio for for the show. In our typical way, for some reason we decided this is just the stupidity of blah blah blah, this, that we would throw all these wrong ideas together. We decided for some reason to make out the show as coming live from Los Angeles. Actually it's funny, we got um, lots of complaints about the show, but uh, would you believe, I mean obviously a few complaints about Lubricated Goat. Yeah. But one of the, uh, we got lots of complaints too about uh, the ABC wasting their money sending Andrew and the crew over to LA and we were very proud of that. Mm. We must have done a really good job of making it look like from it was from LA, even though it was, um, you know, a super cheap job at doing that. I guess those people that complained, maybe they didn't stay till the end. No. Ah, uh, yeah. bum. You see, if they just yeah. stuck stuck with us, they would have realised they were getting value for their dollar. And even though, again, halfway through the show, we completely. Uh, revealed the fact that this was just a setup. People for days after were saying, wow, you went to LA. He just flipped everything, so every, That's all right. the cars we, we, on the right side of the, the uh, correct <laughs> side of the road. We flipped the vision around so that it looked like they were left-hand drive cars. That's right. And all that didn't show up, we actually had a number plate printed back to front so yeah. that, so that it, you know, it was, uh, whatever the number plate was, uh, it was, it didn't quite show up. You had to really look at yeah, it to see that. Yeah, I remember as I did my opening walkthrough, we just dotted the audience was about five genuine Americans, and I hit each of them and talked to them. And they're all Americans. Which part of the states are you from? You know, hey, yeah. hey, well, buddy. Yeah. I'm doing the wrong thing. He it was just a complete Australian. scam. Yeah, but it was amazing. It, it was such a simple thing, but it actually worked really well. It was a fantastic vibe because we were, you know, having lots of fun and you know discussing an important social issue. Had great music, uh, lots of good good humour and comedy, and uh, you know. Lots of fun, so you know, from my memory, the feelings on the night were great. I thought we were going to go in and make a video. I thought it would be a controlled situation. But when we got there, we were, uh, you know, ushered to a uh, dressing room. Pardon the pun. <laughs> and when they came out, when they uh, appeared on stage, you could, have, you could feel the excitement. A band you'll be hearing a lot more about in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, lubricated goats! <laughs> you literally could have cut the air with a knife. Just this buzz through the room of, fuck me dead. Those men are wearing nothing. performance that the band pulled out uh, and the reaction from the live audience was beyond what people were expecting I think. The whole thing about our nude performance it was like uh, it wasn't sexy at all. Ours was more like medical or something or an autopsy. And the only uh, production instruction which Martin would probably recalls is it was to be shot like a rock clip. There was to be no concession made, either in terms of getting closer or being further away for the fact they were naked. It was just a normal shoot. No concession made whatsoever. But the, the buzz in the room, I don't know how many years later is it now, 15 years later, I can still feel it. It was electric. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I thought, okay, naked. If I sat down, who'd know that I was naked? I think the lubricated gate performance was very funny anyway. Yeah. That's the other thing. I mean, it's just stupidly funny. The idea of these men getting up there <laughs> playing naked mm. is just so stupid. I think they made it. They made it a bit hard to love them <laughs> by, from an audience point of view, um, because uh, their choice of song was pretty confronting too. I think it was called Raw, wasn't in, it? In the Raw. In the Raw, was it? In the Raw. Oh, just... oh, Raw. The original edit of that show has some very close close-ups walking over the cameras like six inches away. They're just stepping over the tops of cameras. The ABC legal person who was on duty that night um, didn't have a problem with, um, with the show because with Lubricated Goat being in the nude doing in the raw because it totally was you know, fitted within the ABC's guidelines of responsible broadcasting because it was a you know, serious discussion of censorship and it totally related to it and was of artistic merit, etc, etc. Afterwards, you'd go, you'd go to that legal person and you'd say, was there anything on the show that uh, you think was a bit questionable? Do you think we're actually going to be able to broadcast all this? And this person said, yeah, I think actually the truth was <laughs> this person had had a couple too many sherries. Ah! The ABC publishes editorial guidelines. I, I can't remember the title of it. I think it's editorial policies and practices, editorial policies. And um, it is an outline of the standards and it's really reminding program producers um, to have regard for, to be sensitive to uh, certain standards. But there was no specific provision anywhere that said Thou shalt not put a band on television with no clothes on. I mean, clearly, that, that didn't exist anywhere as a strict instruction. But there was an understanding that you did so very carefully, if mm. at all. Yeah. And the ABC has this wonderful principle of upward referral, which means in order to protect your bottom, you refer it up. So that uh, you can always say, if I can... <laughs> so you can always say, well, I referred it to my... Bottom. ...managing director. Uh, or manager, and he's referred it to his manager, and yes. and so on. So that's there is a principle of upward referral. So if something gets a bit hot to hold, you just pass it up. You know, the ABC is a bureaucracy. It, it's a, it was a far more benign one in those days than it is now. But in a bureaucracy, nobody wants to be left holding the piece of paper with their name down the bottom of it. Mark Fitzgerald had had some discussions about ABC with somebody higher up in ABC management about the show. And, and they had wanted some changes made. Um, some of those changes were made. So from the show's point of view and Mark's point of view, it had been upwardly referred. But in the end, it all boiled down to how many penises and how much scrotum we could put on the screen. And poor Peter, he... I remember him saying... Peter Butler, brother of Richard Butler of UN fame. Correct. But the poor thing, he actually <laughs> said, you, you put these hands with censorship. You keyed them over the screen, but they didn't cover up the penises. And then I had to say, well, that was deliberate. That was my little joke. I remember it was a late night joke in Edit One where I suddenly went, oh, wouldn't it be funny if it had hands? But they didn't cover up the right bits. So that was Mr. Censor trying to, but not the G. <laughs> anyway. The irony was, of course, that those who chose to censor were not paying any attention to the fact that uh, part of the message of the show is that we have double standards in what we censor and that censorship is far more rife in our community than we, uh, we choose to let on. And I must say that with the continual re-editing over the next week, I felt as though I paid a certain price in that, you know, I'd go to sleep at night yeah, and all I'd I mean, hear that... would be this sound of in the roar and the scrotums and penises. And I really thought, gee, I wish this would end soon. Mm. Mm. And I, I finally realised why clothes aren't such a bad idea on men. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next day I walked into a news agent and they were on the front page of the Daily Mirror. Um, 
new rock band shock or something like that. Fantastic. Look at this, you know, shock horror auntie. Um, front page of the Daily Mirror. You can't ask for more if you're, um, if you're making a TV show. I'm annoyed about a television program that was on the ABC on Wednesday night at 9.30. Now, I was told that the ABC had called blah, blah, blah. Why is it allowed to happen? The ABC is slipping down the line. Make it mad. But they were called lubricated goats. There wasn't much entertainment value. Couldn't understand the word they said. I know what they were saying. Raw, raw, raw or something. On the ABC telephone logs the next day, there were 99 complaints you know, from the whole of Australia. There were only 99 complaints. Well, the concerns that were expressed by the managing director were around the Broadcasting Services Act as to whether or not we had contravened any provisions of the Act, and in quite specific terms, I don't think we had, but it was clearly well beyond the boundaries of expectation of an ABC audience that they would see a musical number performed nude. But you see, the beauty of that upward referral system is that if it goes to air, we've got to defend them. Mark Fitzgerald isn't in the gun, and Andrew Denton's not in the gun. I'm in the gun, Paddy Conroy's in the gun, because we're responsible for it going to air, particularly if they referred it to us. It must have been on the Thursday or the Friday or whatever, but we got a phone call, Andrew and I got a phone call to uh, meet David Hill outside the foyer of Gore Hill. And I always remember he came down the hill in his car and the door opened uh, as, as the vehicle was coming down the hill. If they put that to air without referring it upward, then I would have been mightily pissed off. And I remember thinking, oh dear, I think he's actually going to knock us over. Sure. And if they, were, if they had done the wrong thing and they were in fear that I was going to rugby league tackle them, that's even better. <laughs> anyway, this is a story that Andrew tells much better than I do because then we all went over to the canteen, the four of us. David expressed his disapproval and, and I just fired back saying, look, I, with respect, I think you're completely wrong and the, this is why we did this. It's a show about censorship. It's dealing with double standards, etc., etc., etc. The conversation went backwards and forwards and uh, I wouldn't say it was an argument, but it was a frank expression of views. And David Hill and Andrew had the most amazing animated argument that seemed to go on forever, with Tony Ferguson and I uh, initially uh, participating and then not participating at all. And it just built and built and built. And then Tony Ferguson said, I'll never forget this, oh, for Christ's sake, David, it's just a bunch of cocks. <laughs> and. Uh, it was just like, it said everything. And David sort of went, I suppose so. And then started talking about other things and it was all over. Well, it was a serious encounter, was it? Mm. Oh. No. Now, I could hardly protest about material going to air if they had uh, properly referred it. Did they, if, my guess is, my guess is, Remember, I, I couldn't remember the details of this particular uh, incident. It clearly was upwardly referred because we end up, ended up upwardly referred to his office. So, um, look, he may not remember it. Uh, I suspect he does, though. He didn't have that many all-male nude bands on the ABC during his tenure that I recall. But I guess within a week or so, we were looking back on the event and saying the publicity was positive over all um, we were breaking ground, we probably had offended a few, but it was hardly a matter of deep offence. I think we learned from the experience, but you will note, I think with some interest, that there has never been an appearance by a rock group of any kind nude since, so I guess that says something about it. And it didn't, I mean, it didn't really hurt our, um, our relationship with management either, because we'd come to some sort of um, agreement and in the end even David Hill was satisfied. I suppose maybe it was naive to think that there wouldn't be some repercussions but it was never done with that in mind. It was uh, maybe the goat would have thought well this will lift our profile but uh, it was never a stunt it was just something to do. Sold some newspapers and allowed those people that thought that the ABC was a den of sedition 
and uh, wickedness and lewdness. Uh, it gave them some currency again. But bear, bear in mind, this was late 80s. Uh, I think already Australia had changed. I mean, the very title, Lubricated Goat, I mean, you know. You think it's a little bit... Provocative. Conjures up all sorts of images. Oh, it is, it is. Well, you only have to As talk to Bruce Griffiths to understand. Hmm. Mm. If you were to change the band, you'd lose the name, you'd lose the song, you'd lose the sound. And those three things were as important as the fact that they were nude. <laughs> And you know what the biggest tragedy of the whole thing was? What? We had all this publicity, right? But because of the uh, uh, because of the interesting way that the ABC always behaves, that was episode 23 of blah blah blah. And episode 24, the last episode, wasn't going to wear for a month. Hmm, that'll be right. So we lost any benefit in publicity terms. Hmm. Now, if if a commercial television network did that. The, the broadcasting tribunal would be all over them like a, like a, a flea at a, 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 at a dog show. You know, they'd be all over them like a rat. Now, the ABC and SBS, because they're government-funded, are not under the auspices. They, have, they have, don't have to answer to their programming standards or to their broadcast material. They don't have to answer to the broadcasting uh, tribunal. So your, your complaint will get you absolutely nowhere. And... Uh, the, the full view of Lubricated Goats last night and their song called In the Raw, which uh, some of them uh, were apparently nude and genitalia was exposed. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. You can complain to your member of parliament that the ABC can say, well, you can like it or lump it or that's it. That's a joke. Well, it is a joke. You know, it, it just, mate, it, it, makes, it makes the whole thing a sham. It really does. It makes my problems seem insignificant. Mate, the world is going mad, believe me, the world is going mad. I like looking at naked men when they've got the erections. I like looking at naked men. Oh, naked men with erections. Naked men in the raw. Naked men who give me twenty. Naked men who give me more. I like looking at naked men when they've got erections. I like looking at naked men.